After its last test flight ended in flames, SpaceX has made several genius upgrades to Starship's next prototype. SpaceX hopes these changes will finally allow the craft to make it into orbit. In today's video, let's talk about these upgrades and how they'll improve Starship's performance. Can SpaceX make these upgrades before the next test flight? SpaceX is actively trying to turn the sci-fi dream of a Martian colony into reality. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlement within reach at long last. When Musk revealed his idea to the world, he laid out a basic plan. A large spacecraft and a huge rocket, both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable. The rocket will launch the spacecraft into Earth's orbit, then come back down to Earth for a vertical, propulsive landing. Over the years, the Starship has undergone several design changes as SpaceX continues to perfect the transport and make it as safe as possible for the settlers that will be undertaking the long journey to Mars. The craft includes various amenities for the crew, such as an exercise bay, sleeping quarters, and a fully stocked kitchen area. SpaceX has made a significant upgrade to the Starship boosters in the latest iteration of the craft. Once optimized, SpaceX says a Starship can launch up to 150 tons to low Earth orbit while still recovering the orbital ship and suborbital booster for reuse. CEO Elon Musk has stated that Starship reuse will eventually take hours, enabling multiple flights per day for each ship and booster, and dropping the marginal cost of each launch to just a few million dollars. In comparison, SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket uses simpler Merlin 1D engines, has just 10 of those engines to Starship's 39 Raptors, produces about 10 times less thrust at liftoff, and can launch about 11% as much payload to orbit while expanding its upper stage. Even then, Musk reported in mid-2020 that the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 launch was $15 million, impressively low but still a vivid demonstration of just how far Starship has to go. Simply ensuring that Starship can reach orbit at all is a major challenge. Successfully recovering Starship and Super Heavy after the fact may be an even bigger challenge and cannot be fully demonstrated until the rocket can consistently reach orbit. SpaceX won't be able to reuse Starship until it can consistently recover ships and boosters from orbital launches. And there's no guarantee that early prototypes will be reusable even if they're recovered. SpaceX is fairly confident that the next test flight will be much cleaner as it will feature Booster 9, which is a marginal upgrade over the Booster 7 used in the first test. For starters, Booster 9 features an engine isolation system which will provide far greater control for the ground crew in the event of failure after launch. One of the most notable changes from previous prototypes is the removal of the hydraulic power units on the side of the aft section that was used to power the thrust vector control gimbaling system. The engines on Booster 9 are the first to use electric TVC instead of hydraulic ones on Booster 7. Some hardware has also been added to the thrust dome to improve structural stability. The large liquid methane pipes for the gimbaling Raptor engines are now pre-mounted on the thrust puck, which will simplify the pre-assembly needed on the engines and may speed up installation for future launches. Until reusability is demonstrated, every Starship upper stage will be functionally expendable whether or not Elon Musk wants it to be. Musk likely means that SpaceX may or may not decide to develop a Starship upper stage custom-built for expendable missions. Such a stage would likely take Starship, remove everything extraneous, and reduce its mass as much as possible. Musk has proposed something similar before, noting that SpaceX could develop a lightened version of Starship with no heat shield or fins or legs for expendable interplanetary launches. Further to the contrary, SpaceX's Starbase factory is already building multiple intentionally expendable Starships. Ship 26 and Ship 27 feature no thermal protection, have no heat shield tiles, and will not be fitted with flaps, making them impossible to recover or reuse. More likely than not, they will be used to test other crucial Starship technologies like orbital refilling and cryogenic fluid management. Meanwhile, SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract to use Starship to return NASA astronauts to the moon revolves around a depot ship variant that will store propellant in orbit and cannot return to Earth. The first few Starship moon landers may also be functionally expendable and only used for one astronaut landing apiece. In short, SpaceX already has extensive plans to build variants of Starship that are either fully expendable or can only be reused in orbit. In early 2023, SpaceX revealed that an expendable version of the rocket will be able to launch up to 250 metric tons to low Earth orbit in a single launch. 
Saturn V, the next most capable expendable rocket, could launch up to 118 tons to low Earth orbit and cost $1 to $2 billion per launch. SpaceX publicly advertising the expendable performance of Starship unsurprisingly confirms that the company is considering all the capabilities its new launch system will offer. And Starship's expendable capabilities are significant. Constructed piece by piece over dozens of launches, the International Space Station weighs about 420 tons. Two expendable Starships could launch more usable mass to LEO, truly revolutionary if SpaceX can make Starship launches frequent and routine. Apart from upgrades to the booster, SpaceX has also made massive improvements to the Starship's engines. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow, staged combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. As research and development continue on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy prototype Booster 7, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. SpaceX continues to look for more ways to make the Starship even more powerful in the future. Recently, the company announced it may have discovered a new method of rocket propulsion. SpaceX says it has created a thruster system that defies physics and has successfully tested it. The rocket propulsion system uses electrically charged gas and can achieve speeds up to 65 kilometers per second or about 135,000 miles per hour. The engine is made from super lightweight carbon fiber fuel tanks with cold gas thrusters. It doesn't use any type of propellant, meaning it does not expel any byproducts into space. Instead, the engine produces thrust by accelerating superheated plasma with magnetic fields, which also means no fumes are being expelled from combustion. These types of engines are known as electric thrusters, but they work very differently from those used in SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets. These thrusters create thrust by propelling pressurized gas, whereas electric ones produce a charged plasma that emits ions to push a craft forward. The electric engine developed by SpaceX is reportedly more powerful than conventional gridded ion thrusters and could power manned missions to Mars and beyond. It could also cut down on travel time for spacebound cargo because it requires less propellant, which can be expensive to launch into orbit. The technology is still being tested and further development is needed before it will be ready for spaceflight. It has been submitted for peer review, and NASA experts think it has potential, at least on paper. Some say it's impossible to travel at high speeds through space, but that hasn't stopped Elon Musk from claiming he can do it. His idea is to create a light speed engine that will take us to Mars in just 70 days. Such an engine defies physics and would mean traveling faster than 186,000 miles per second. There are a few ways that we could travel at light speed, but first, we need to understand how light works. As it travels through space, every atom in its path interacts with it. This slows it down and even stops it completely if there's no matter around to pass through. Because of these interactions, light has a maximum velocity of 186,000 miles per second, meaning that's as fast as it can go through space. 
Since nothing can travel faster than light without breaking the rules of physics, if we want to catch up with a distant star in our lifetime, we have to find another way to get there besides traveling directly toward it. SpaceX has also received significant backlash after the first test from residents in the area as dust and debris from the launch were sent flying, sometimes for miles, creating concerns for some locals. According to a City of Port Isabel Facebook post, it has been confirmed that the spray of Starship Detritus that covered locals' cars and homes posed no health risk and was in fact sand and dust, lofted airborne and thrown miles in every direction by the rocket's liftoff. Closer to ground zero, the 33 engines of the rocket's main booster left a literal crater in the concrete at Starship's launch pad. Debris large enough to crush a car was sent flying in every direction, and while the tower was left standing, the launch complex is in need of some major cleanup efforts. Images from RGV Aerial Photography and Spaceflight Now show construction materials and pieces of old Starship builds strewn across the surrounding area, and a Twitter video shows a NASA spaceflight van getting mangled by the flying rubble. SpaceX has responded to the lawsuit by significantly upgrading the launch facilities at their test site. These new upgrades will not only reduce the environmental impact of the test, but also neutralize the threat of debris in the future. Elon Musk stated that SpaceX started building a massive, water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount, but that it would not have been ready before the launch on April 20th. He suggested it would be ready for installation before the next launch attempt in one to two months. The billionaire CEO had said in 2020 that there would be no need to use such a flame diverter to steer the flames on the ground, but acknowledged that could be the wrong decision. Other launch sites in the United States, such as SpaceX's own pads at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, use flame diverters, which are large, cavernous hallways leading away from a rocket's underside to steer its tail of fiery forces in a controlled path, aimed at minimizing damage. Without such a plan, debris kicked up during liftoff could strike the rocket itself and compromise the mission and public safety. Tom Arata, an advisor of launch regulations to space companies, said that before any next Starship launch attempt, the Federal Aviation Administration would need to approve the changes to the launch pad infrastructure to prevent another potentially hazardous scenario. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about SpaceX's new Raptor engine's big problem. Do you think the Starship can safely perform a crewed mission? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.